hope everyone welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing this black cat in charcoal a lot of people struggle with black animals so that's why I've done a few tutorials but I've not done one in charcoal yet so I thought I'd do this one you can see there's another cat in drawing and it's a tabby and white but even though it's it's showing in this video I'm not going to be actually showing how I did this one I did do a tabby cat portrait as a tutorial in charcoal not so long back so I'll link to that above so you can have a look at that if you want to know how I did the tabby cat so as per usual I started with the lighter tones and on this cat there's not going to be many because it's a black cat so it was just on eyes the actual irises and the highlights on pupils and then I just moved straight on to black and all I'm going to do is just completely cover the cat in black charcoal Charcoal. and as you can see I am working in the direction that the air grows in I'm not just scribbling it on in any random direction and you'll also notice that the paper's still showing through where I'm applying this charcoal but don't worry about that because that's all going to go away once I get the blending stump on it and then start layering it up if you look at the cat in the reference photo you'll see that some of the cat is darker black where the light's not reflecting off any fur and I'm just going to add some more charcoal to these areas and make it a bit darker but the areas where you've got highlights on cat where you've got light reflecting off at fur and making it look paler I'm not going to put as much charcoal there. So now I'm coming in with a blending stump and I'm just going to use this to blend all this charcoal that I've laid down already. You'll see that the paper that's showing through will start to disappear as well whilst I smooth all that out which is what I said earlier when it don't really matter when there's paper showing through your, like your very first layer that you lay down because it'll just disappear once you start blending it with that stump. You'll see me swapping between two different size blending stumps. I use the bigger one to work the larger areas and then when I want to do some more careful work around features like your nose and mouth then I swap to a smaller one to do that. You'll also notice that the areas where I applied more charcoal before still remain a bit darker than the areas that I didn't apply as much charcoal because obviously they don't need to be as dark. Even though the highlighted areas on this cat are not going to be too light because obviously it's a black cat, it is easier to put highlights on when you've not got too many thick layers of charcoal, black charcoal underneath it. But you obviously want some underneath it to an extent because it helps to give them areas some depth. So when you blend your charcoal it does tend to lighten it that little bit when you want it really dark. It just takes away that, that blackness and makes it a little bit dark grey instead. So I always come back in again with charcoal pencil and just keep layering it up and making it nice and black again. And also tidying up a few features that got a little bit messy when I were blending that previous layer. Just tidying them up and defining them and what have you. Adding some dark fur textures and that sort of thing. Basically just finalising the preparations for when I come in with that white charcoal pencil and start putting in all the highlights. And when I've finished applying more black charcoal I come back in with this blending stump and I'm just going to stick with smaller blending stump this time because I don't want to push the blending this time as much as what I did last time. I just want to tone down any harsh strokes and any sort of like blunt edges and things like that just soften it that little bit and I also used it to add a couple of shadows that were being cast on the actual eyes as well and when all this is done I'm finally ready to come in with that white charcoal pencil and start adding the final details and I'm going to make a start on ears first and top of head just adding in some little white hairs and some paler areas where you've got some skin showing inside them ear flaps and also some hair texture on top of head where there's some light hitting top of cat's head. You'll see me swapping between the black and white charcoal pencil a little bit as well whilst I'm doing this. And that's because you can blend just by using the actual pencils. So using the black and the white and you can just blend without doing anything else than using the pencils next to each other. And you might also want some darker details as well to overlap your lighter areas that you've just done with your white charcoal pencil. You can see me come back in with a black charcoal pencil just here to add a few details inside of that ear before I put the final white hairs on top and also to soften that graduation between that highlighted area on top of head and then that really dark area on the actual forehead of the cat. So I'll just continue adding highlights to cat wherever they show up on reference photo and I also took time to 
do a little bit more work on eyes and what have you because they're mostly pale colours so it gave me a chance to get that white charcoal pencil on them again and tidy them up a little bit more. On the fur it's just a case of paying attention to the direction that the air grows in so just pay attention to your reference photo, have a look at where the air is growing in and making sure that you do it the same as what it is there. You don't want to cover the old cat because in the end of the day it is a black cat and if you cover the old cat you could just end up making it look like a grey cat. So you do want to be leaving some areas quite dark and not really applying any highlights to them areas at all. And then the areas between your highlighted areas and your dark areas, you don't want it to be too abrupt. So you just want to soften it a little bit using hair strokes so your hair strokes just get a little bit less dense as they go into a darker area so it just gradually darkens. So anyway whilst I'm doing this I thought I'd just take the opportunity to thank everybody who's subscribed and what have you. I reached the 3000 subscribers milestone in the early hours of the 1st of March. I wanted to try and get to it by March and I managed it within you know a couple hours late but it weren't too bad. It was always going to be a really close one and I also got my first super thanks last month as well on my last video. I really weren't expecting it, I asked in my video if anybody wanted to help support my channel then it would be really appreciated and I actually did get one, I couldn't believe it. So yeah, if anybody else feels like uh, offering a little bit of support then feel free. It all helps me to continue this channel and to build up on it. And I keep getting people asking me to draw certain animals and what have you. And at the moment I can't just draw what people request because all these that I'm doing in these videos are commissions and it just so happens to be whatever people commission me to do, which is what I put in these videos. So I can't really pick and choose at the moment, I'm afraid, because it's commissions that pays me bills. And I get a little bit from YouTube now, but it's certainly not very much at all. It's just a little bit of pocket change, really, that I get from YouTube. So if I can build it up a little bit, then it'll start making things easier. That I can start putting a little bit more time into what I put onto YouTube and maybe at some point a Patreon as well. So back to it, Kat, and I'm pretty much done adding the highlighted areas in. So I'm just going to come in with a soft brush and just dab them slightly just to soften them that little bit so they're not as harsh as what they are when you first apply them and then because that will probably just dull down your whites a little bit you just come back in again on top but it just creates that softer base so it don't look as you know harsh and sharp and what have you as when you first put it on your first layer of it you can keep repeating this process several times but just bear in mind that the image does look a little bit sharper in this footage. When you see the photos at end they do look a lot more soft than you know what, what they actually look in this footage. It seems to really emphasise you know the, the edges and what have you when I film on this phone. It's just a phone that I use purely for getting footage. It does get better footage than my actual phone which is just a cheap phone. But I bought this one from a friend of mine who just sold it me very right cheap just so that I could uh, do better quality footage of my drawings because there's just no way to put a big camera above my charcoal drawings on my desk so I just film with a phone. So all I have to do now is some final little touches and then it's pretty much done and I hope that you found this video useful if you're trying to draw a black cat using charcoal or you're just trying to learn more techniques with charcoal. I don't seem to have as many charcoal people on my channel so it would be nice to bring a few more along. But if you did like it then please give my video a like so it gets pushed out to more people and if you've not subscribed then if you want to subscribe and then you'll see more videos like this in the future especially if you turn on the notification bell. And if anybody feels like supporting my channel even more then there's super thanks as well which I managed to get one so far so which I never expected so thank you again for that. And I think this is going to be it for this video, so I'll see you in my next one. Bye!